Born in Wabash, Indiana, Hoosier author Jean Stratton Porter spent most of her life in Geneva, Indiana. Nature was a common theme among Jean's novels, articles, and nature books. The 18 years she spent at Limberlost shaped her ideals and passions. Today, we'll be speaking with Kurt Burnett, site naturalist at Limberlost State Historic Site. We sat down to chat about Jean, her home, her surroundings, her family, her experiences that inspired her works, and her legacy. So, Kurt, who was Jean Stratton Porter? Well, that's a difficult question to answer in as few words because she was a lot. Of course, she was a world-famous novelist, and that's what she's known best for and where she made her wealth. But she was also talented in other areas. She's a very talented nature photographer. She won awards for pictures. She took bird, pictures of birds in ways no one had ever done. She was also a musician. She knew music. She could write music, play various instruments. She was an artist. She could paint. She could draw. She colored some of her own photographs with watercolors for her nature books. And she was a conservationist, a very important part of what she was. She was very instrumental in getting the word out to people about conservation a hundred years ago. She understood the importance of it. So, uh, and I'm probably forgetting things because the woman was so incredibly talented. Okay, now she lived here in Geneva. Can you talk a little bit about this house? Well, she and her husband built this home and it was completed in 1895. And they named it the Limberlost Cabin. Sometimes people say, this is an awfully big house to be a cabin and where are the, the logs on the inside? It is truly a log home, white cedar logs on the outside. But because they had wealth, they were able to do the interior here uh, very, very nicely. Mm -hmm. And so inside, you'd hardly know you were in a long home. But this was a collaboration between she and her husband as far as design and a young architect from the town of Decatur, which is where uh, Charles Porter was actually from. Okay, and how long did they live here? They lived here about 18 years, which is longer than any other house Jean Stratton Porter ever lived in. So she spent more time in this house than any other. And I like to tell people that there's more of Jean soaked into this house than any other because of that. Yeah. Um, why do you think they picked this place to build their house? Well, when the Porters married in 1886, they actually lived up in Decatur in the home that Charles had grown up in. And he had businesses here, so he'd take the train down. He was gone a lot. And after Jean had their one and only child, Jeanette, uh, she wanted to be with her husband more. So that's when they decided to move here to Geneva in uh, 1888. And uh, coincidentally, Jeanette Stratton Porter's full first name was Geneva. So in 1888, Geneva moved to Geneva. And it is pure coincidence, there's no connection. That's kind of kind of wild when you think about that. Um, so uh, at the time when they moved here, there was a little yellow cottage on this site that they lived in. And after they became wealthy through oil, Charles Porter owned a farm west of town. And when oil was discovered, he was sitting right on top of oil. So they became wealthy with oil and they moved the little yellow house over to where our parking lot is now and built the Limberlost cabin on this site. Okay, and she really liked being able to interact with nature. Yes, <laughs> I, I can really appreciate that with her as the naturalist here. Um, and the Limberlost Swamp was on the south edge of town. So literally, you could walk five minutes over and be to it, 10 minutes say, in a five minute buggy ride. So it was right there. 
And then there were other natural areas around here too. The floodplain of the Wabash River, Rainbow Bottom, an area she called Valley of the Wood Robin, just east of town. Um, and then the marsh, which was a little farther away to the southwest. And it seems like she used a lot of those experiences to write her books. Yes. She used a lot of real people, places, things, and events in her book. In the books, uh, Freckles, um, The Girl from Lost in the Harvester, the character of the Bird Woman is actually Jean Stratton Porter. She was really known as the Bird Woman, and so she wrote herself into the books. And things that happened to her or people she knew, she also incorporated into the books. How many books did she write? Well, a total, uh, one published, um, two actually published right after her death, would be 26 books that she wrote, including poetry books. She was also a poet. Okay. Too. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um, I've walked around the house inside a little bit and it seems like there's something everywhere in every corner that you can look at and focus on and there's just so much stuff in here. There is. Uh, a good portion of it is original and if not things like the typewriter we have here, it's not her typewriter but it's from the era 1913 similar to what she would have had. So yeah this is a house full of interesting things and then Fortunately, we can't talk about everything when we go on tour because there's too much, too many stories, too much stuff, too much gene everywhere. So people should come here multiple times. Well, I'd recommend it. And each time, um, you may like a tour guide you have, but get a new one because we all have different backgrounds, different experiences. I tend to be more nature oriented and talk about some of her nature adventures. So uh, you could go through here several times and learn things every time. What is one of her nature adventures? Well, let's see here. Here's this. At times, Jean, like all humans, was a little foolish because one time she really wanted to get out to a bird nest and there had been a big flood. So she took her little black horse and buggy out east and there was a, a stream that she wanted to cross and her horse refused to go. She kept trying to get him to cross. He wouldn't do it. So she gave up. Now, after the flood, she went back and saw that the area that she wanted to cross would have been about eight or nine feet deep, and she would have been swept away. The horse knew it, but Jean didn't, so the horse saved her life yeah. by refusing to go. Well, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> very good. So uh, that's just, I mean, there's many stories she had about the things she did out there, and, um, and they're all very interesting stories. And she was alive, you know, in kind of what we call the golden age of literature. Hoosier literature. Hoosier yeah. literature in yeah. the state of Indiana. Who would some of her contemporaries would have been? Well, uh, Booth Tarkington, of course, you know, winner of the Pulitzer Prize twice, which uh, only two other authors ever did. So he's from Indianapolis. He was very famous. And he, he and Gene were both on the bestseller list in those days, as were other Hoosier authors like... Um, well, other authors, I'm not sure they were on the bestseller list, but other authors of the time. Lou Wallace of Ben-Hur fame, mm -hmm. James Whitcomb Riley, George A. Meredith Nicholson. We were the second the state that had the second most number of famous and popular authors. Only New York State exceeded us at that time. That is amazing. We can be proud of that as Hoosiers. For yeah, sure. I would not have expected that at all. I know, and Jean was a big part of it. Mm -hmm. She was huge. Mm -hmm. So she would sometimes take things from nature and bring them back to the house. Yes. What would she do with those? Well, um, sometimes she actually would use things for her creative impulses like artwork or whatever, but mostly it was to study and like caterpillars, uh, cocoons. She would find them, people would bring them to her. She would uh, say, uh, raise caterpillars in her conservatory. She might put a moth in there and shut the doors and let it fly around and lay eggs. At one time and she lured an owl through the kitchen window, a screech owl flew into the house because she imitated its call. And so she put it in the conservatory during the day, took pictures of it, let it go the next night. Wow. Yeah, she was doing things like that all the time, amazing things like that. She was always learning, always, always. writing. Yes, always, yeah. always. She would uh, study it intensively like moths. She got the best books of the time, and if she was curious about something they said in the book, she wrote the author and questioned them. So she really had a passion for knowledge. She did. Yeah. Very much so. Okay. Yeah. And what happened after she moved here? Where did they go? After this one, she, she built the home up in Rome City. 
and lived there not real long actually, only roughly about five years. Then she decided to go live in California. And that was about 1920, she really started doing things. She purchased a home in Los Angeles. And then um, she started her own movie production company out there. One of the first women to ever do that. Jean Stratton Porter Productions. And that was to turn her books into movies her way. And she also built a retreat on uh, Santa Catalina Island off the coast of Los Angeles. And then she built a mansion in Bel Air, a fabulous mansion that sadly she never lived in. Just a few weeks before she would have moved in, she was killed in a car accident in Los Angeles. So she never lived there. But her daughter, Jeanette, lived there for about 10 years with her family. So there's some good news about the mansion. Were any movies ever made from her books? Yes, oh my gosh. Um, if you look at the list that we have, that we give away as a, as a reference to folks who come here as a souvenir, you'll see 23 movies have been made from nine of her novels. Not many authors can say they've had 23 or more movies done from their works. In the big picture of all the movies ever made, all the books ever written, that is extraordinarily rare. And five of the movies were done by her production company, two under her supervision, three after her death. Wow, that is a lot of work. It is. It's astonishing when you think about that, 23 movies. What a life. Yeah. How far and wide has Jean's legacy um, persisted? Yeah, one thing we try to definitely get across to folks is how famous Jean Stratton Porter was. Some folks have the misconception that she wrote a couple of famous books, she lived on the edge of the swamp, and that was kind of it. But as we discovered from our talk, it was way more than that. And her works were translated to 13 foreign languages. So she was read around the world. So she had fans around the world. And to this day, she still has fans around the world. The most um, famous would be J.K. Rowling of Harry Potter fame. She read the book, A Girl of the Limblost, over in Great Britain when she was a child, and said it was magnificent. Um, Carter, are there other places around here that people could visit that are associated with Jean? Yes. You know, for many, many years, well, 85 years, if someone said, I want to go see the Limberlaw Swamp, forget it, it didn't exist. But in the last 25 years, there's been a, an effort to restore some of these wetlands that she knew. So now we have over 1,700 acres of Limberlaw Conservation Area Nature Preserves. The farthest one away from here is only 12 minute drive. So they're all nearby because Jean uh, spent a lot of time in a horse and buggy. And so she couldn't go real far. And they're all free and open to the public. They all have hiking trails. Some of uh, them have really nice signs on them that relate back to Jean Stratton Porter. So you can go out there and learn even more about her. So we highly recommend that when people come here, they do that. And we give away free maps to show you where they're all at and what you can do on them. I like that. That's, yeah. that's a good Jean, idea. Jean would love it. Yeah. I'm sure she would. <laughs> yeah. The people out there. It yeah. fit right in. It does. It yeah. does. Yeah. Kurt, thank you so much for talking to me today, and thank you to Indiana State Museum and Historic Sites for hosting us. Well, thanks for coming, and um, I'm glad you were able to visit us here. It's been a nice visit.